Dressed is a mobile fashion styling game that was created by former fashion editor Lucy Yemens. They were recently named one of Fast Company's most innovative companies. Now, this is not something we typically highlight uh, making a top uh, 100 list um, on the podcast, but we're doing it twice in one day today. And um, it deserves special note because while this was created by a fashion editor, it's a, a shopping game. It was nominated as one of the most innovative gaming companies, not retail apps or anything. So let me break down for you quickly how Dressed works. So players, uh, you download the app, you get a budget, a challenge, and then it opens the door to like this virtual fashion closet where you can mix and match on a model real pieces from um, you know high fashion brands like Gucci, Prada, Chloe and Stella McCartney. So players create their own like photo shoots. They can also then, once they've created this outfit, purchase um, additional virtual spending money with real dollars, or they can click a link to the Farfetch marketplace to purchase the real pieces by, for themselves. So dressed, I have an, is also part of our A&M put us on the spot question. So Chris oh and Emma. This is where the A&M put it on the spot this, question is? Yeah, it's oh, wow. sneaky, huh? You weren't this expecting one. it. Yeah, no, I forget. Yeah, no, this is like, ooh, okay. Okay, Emma, so you can now, take this one. Yeah. <laughs> so now that now that you understand what dressed is, this is the question. So dressed is getting a lot of hype for bringing discovery, shopping, and entertainment in a virtual world. Traditionally, we're a place that customers have spearfished and bought what they were looking for versus being introduced to something that they might desire or want. I'd like you to compare and contrast this to the real world live streaming opportunity on TikTok or beyond. That's the first part of the question. Second part, is this really different than live streaming? Does Dressed solve a customer pain point that live streaming is not by really bringing discovery, entertainment, and shopping together? And three-parter, a and really bringing it, Emma, so I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> what is the impact this will have on physical retail? Oh my God. How, oh my, Emma, please go first. Please. <laughs> you, oh might my need God. A, you might need a kombucha. This this is, that's a big enchilada on this one. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. I could write like a dissertation on that. But Do it. Let's go. go. So there's, I think there's a big difference between watching a live stream on any social platform because that's an act of consuming shopping content and inspiration. Whereas when you're in the gaming for, format, you're more so creating the content you want to see and then can find inspiration from. They're just two very different ways to discover and immerse yourself within a brand or a product. And which one is more effective in terms of solving customer pain points really just depends on your preferences of how you want to consume content. So I played around with the Dressed app for like an hour and I've never been a gaming person. So this, it really did nothing for me. I wasn't interested in styling a model or anything. I would much prefer the hunt of scrolling through product listings or watching a live stream to learn more about a brand or a product that I'm interested in. So I think it really just comes down to if you prefer the format of gaming where you're trying to like win a challenge and therefore can find some products, this is for you, but it's just different from live streaming, you know? Yeah, that, okay, good. Glad you went first. Um, God, <laughs> I, I had some time to think about this one as you were talking. I mean, I, I, I actually think I agree with everything Emma just said. I think the other interesting thing here though, is that it's also about a new asset category. Like, that's what I think we're getting. There's been all the, all the talk of late of like the NFTs, you know, what is it? it and you always help me with this. The non-fungible non tokens, non-fungible tokens, right. Which yes. are essentially digital assets. I think what you, that's what you start to get into here over the long run is that it's not, it's not, it's the questions almost become, you know, I don't want to say irrelevant, but they almost become really contextually different because it's not about digital retail. It's not about physical retail. It's actually about the procurement or buying of something else entirely. And I think there's a ton of space for that. So like, you know, why do great designers only have to create physical product? Couldn't they create great digital products? Or, you know, couldn't you even start to sell the patterns by which some of those fabulous dresses, as an example, are made from? Like you start to get into really interesting realms here that is all new business. And if retailers and designers and influencers can think about that in the right way, there could be a big untapped gold mine here. And yeah, I, you know, this is way too cool for me. This way like too the, closest, cool. the closest analog cool I have for, for this was like the fashion plates game that I did love in the eighties where you swapped the out the that? different. 
oh my gosh you oh got God. you got to like make outfits and then you had to scribble with a pencil on top of the fashion plate to like make the outfits oh yeah it. i remember that it was, I was too amazing busy playing hungry hippo sure fair fair enough but I, Chris, I think you're right. I mean, I think there's definitely an audience for this. I look at the way that, you know, the the Gen Beta consumes media and like they're buying skins for their Fortnite people and they're paying like $25, $30 for that kind of thing. And so I think one, it's a, it's a really cool way for um, that generation to start engaging with these brands in an aspirational sense. It exposes them to the brands. They can then maybe get the Prada bag when they're in their twenties or something, because they know and are familiar with these brands. It's a way for these luxury brands to connect with the younger consumer earlier on. And yes, maybe they're buying like a $20 pair of pants that they're going to put on their models, but then down the road, you know, who knows, they might want to buy that pair of pants in real life for the nostalgia of it all. I just, I think there's some real opportunity. If people are paying $200,000 for a digital clip of LeBron doing a dunk, right. man, anything's possible. Yeah, I agree. Like when I think about like the, like Missoni, when, you know, t- from my experience, like when Missoni was dropped to Target and that thing sold out in stores in like two hours or like when Lily Pulitzer crashed the site, why isn't there a digital asset version of that? Or like the Nike shoe drops, which you've talked about on the show, why isn't there a digital asset version of that that's complementary in some way and just only extends your, your reach, your cachet and your coolness? Like I think yeah. I, it totally makes sense to me. 